My name is Michael Krall, but just, you can just call me Michael. And uh, well, I started the project uh, with the name crowdflow.net, and I will talk about it in a, a few seconds. Well, uh, usually I make uh, data visualization stuff for newspapers and uh, websites and, and stuff like that. Uh, for example, this was the last project. I visualized some data from, from Facebook. This, is this 16 to 9? This looks a little bit strange. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, Facebook data uh, from Max Schrems. You can see it at uh, Facebook versus uh, Europe. Uh, we did it for, for Tuts. And probably the most famous project was uh, the data retention uh, visualization on site online. I did it with uh, Lorenz Matzat, and we visualized um, the, well, telecommunication provider data uh, from a guy called Malte Spitz. And it's really interesting to analyze it, but it would be more interesting to analyze the whole society if you can see the pattern of, of yeah, the whole society. And there was um, this location gate thingy. Um, um, you probably remember the iPhone tracker uh, that you can install a small uh, application that um, extracts the location data from your iPhone and presented it in a map. And you can see how, it, how, it, how, you, can, or how you move through, through uh, Germany. Or, and basically it's working that the iPhones are scanning um, Wi-Fi stations nearby, measuring signal strength and stuff like that, and sending it to Apple. And Apple can, uh, generates an, a map, a map of Wi-Fi stations uh, all over the world. And it then sends this uh, data to, to iPhones, and these iPhones using the uh, uh, location of the Wi-Fi station to triangulate their own position. So it's basically like GPS, what it's called WPS, it's a Wi-Fi positioning system. And it's cheaper, easier, faster than GPS, and using less battery and uh, stuff like that. So um, we started this project, Crowdflow.net, and basically it's a Java app that can extract the data, the location data, um, from your iPhone. And you can see it for yourself. It's a simple CSV file, but you can also upload it to us. And currently, we collected 1,500 uh, well data donations, and we made some uh, analysis and some visualizations out of that. The first one is uh, where does all these um, stuff come from? So mostly it's uh, from Europe, big part of the United States. Of course, Germany is pretty big because it started here in Berlin. And uh, you can do a lot of stuff or a lot more stuff. Um, for example. Uh, 150,000 Wi-Fi stations are here in, in Germany, and you can use the MAC address to find out who's the manufacturer of these Wi-Fi stations. And you can make a chart, and you can see that AVM, it's the manufacturer of the Fritz box, it's a DSL Wi-Fi uh, station, um, it's most popular, Arcadine, Cisco, D-Link, Netgear. This is a map of Wi-Fi stations in, in Berlin. I don't know how much it is, but probably a million. No, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, currently, we have 30 million Wi-Fi stations. You can download it. It's a 1.5 gigabyte file. You can download all the stuff on, on crowdflow.net. But today, I want to show you a new bug we found uh, in this. Oh, oh no, first, that's really great. It's a mesmerizing video. Uh, I called it Firefly because it looks like 900 uh, fireflies uh, moving through Middle Europe in. Uh, yeah, and it's a time-lapse video, and it's in HD on YouTube. You should uh, definitely uh, see it. It's great stuff. But now here's the, the actual bug I want to show you. Um, this is a small town in, in Brandenburg. It's uh, Neuruppin. Yeah, probably never heard of it. And uh, I, I uh, added some, some dots for every Wi-Fi station in Neuruppin. Uh, well, according to uh, Apple, where these Wi-Fi sh stations should be. And the interesting thing is that the Wi-Fi stations are distributed, and somehow there are some apartments and some buildings and estates wh where they seems to have five or up to ten Wi-Fi stations. So why would somebody install ten Wi-Fi stations at home? And these small clusters uh, seems only to be in, in, in villages with a low density of, of iPhone and, and Wi-Fi. So it seems to be a bug on, uh, on, on Apple's side. So I investigated it in, in, a, in a village and I found out that these are the places where people live who have an iPhone. So why is that? Well, the reason is that um, the iPhone's collecting uh, data about the Wi-Fi stations nearby and sends it to Apple. And Apple uses this data to triangulate these Wi-Fi stations to create this map. But if you have just one iPhone and you want to triangulate the Wi-Fi stations nearby, 
then, well, if you just watch it from one point of view, you can't triangulate it. So the best uh, estimate would be that all Wi-Fi wi stations are just very close together. So that means that um, at well, places with just one iPhone, it started to, well, drag and pull all the Wi-Fi stations, well, at least the locations, to, to such small clusters. And, well, since Apple is still uh, publishing the data, you can use this map well, to check uh, if, if in a village is somebody living with, with an iPhone. Well, that's it's a funny thing, because I, I don't think that that Apple uh, actually thought about uh, publishing a, a map of, of iPhone users. Well, um, during, during this work, I, I had a very interesting question because Every data that Apple publishes is, is anonymized. You don't know which iPhone, you don't know which Wi-Fi station or will, at least who, uh, uh, to whom it belongs, but still anonymized data still contains personal identifiable information. Yeah? Because you don't know which iPhone it was or which Wi-Fi station, but you can see that clusters are at the specific addresses, at specific houses. Well, I think you, you should think about it, what, what data privacy and data protection really means and how you can enforce it or not. Thank you very much, if you have questions.